Hey, what's up everybody? It's Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of the creditrepairshop.com. And in this video, I'm just going to go down a list of debt collectors that are banned from collecting debts uh, in the United States, or basically they're only going to be collecting in the United States. But if you're getting any collection letters from these companies, they are illegally sending them to you. They cannot do it. They've been banned from uh, being able to collect debt in all 50 states. So here is the list here, and I'm going to just scroll down the list, and uh, and I'm going to also put the link in the, the video description so you can uh, go through and, and search and see what they have. But uh, So what we have here is Four Star uh, Resolution LLC, and it'll show the actual case uh, let me go back here. Right here it is, the order. So you can see here, uh, some of them had monetary uh, judgments against them. Let me go right here. Uh, so you can see here what it ended up happening. And had the findings. Court has jurisdiction over this matter. Uh, complaint charges that defendants participated in a deceptive, deceptive and unlawful debt collection practices in violation of Section 5 of the FTC Act. And we're going to look at that, uh, the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, 15 USC. We're going to look at that also. And then also they had here with New, uh, New York Executive Law, which is general business law. Um, you know, we're looking at that also. But you're, uh, you know, you can, if you like, you can comb through these. You can see six... 6P LLC, 6P Management is probably the same two companies. Absolute Financial Services, I remember this one was around big time. Uh, Advanced Mediation Group, a lot of the times they'll use this company, this name here, uh, Mediation, and uh, because they don't want people to uh, know that they're debt collectors. Same with these. The uh, reason why they don't put that they're a debt collector, you know, like, uh, absolute debt collection services is because when they send out a letter and it has that actually on there they're violating the uh, uh, your rights by letting a third party know that you have a debt collection uh, issue going on here go some of the other companies some of these were i guess individuals that were individually sued they didn't set up an llc uh, Credited receivables. I'm not sure. I haven't heard of that one. Credited. Maybe I have. I know I've heard of this one, Apex. Heard of this one, Ashton. Asset and Capital Management. Of course, I've heard of that one. I'm pretty sure you've probably heard of them. Here's one here. Um, it says, what is that? Barclayer Management. And then they had Clear Credit Services. Credit solu clear Credit Solutions, I heard of that one. Uh, haven't heard of these ones here. Uh, these were just individuals. Capital Exchange, that sounds familiar. Uh, let's see here. These are all just individual. Check Fraud Services. Let's look at what they had for Check Fraud Services. What were they doing? Uh, basically, same thing that they had here. Let's try to dig into it. Uh, they didn't deny any allegations. Defendants waived any claim. They may have under equal access protection justice. Uh, looking at what they actually did, which was uh, financially related product or service, which means in some of this stuff, when they describe it, because it falls under the business practices for um, services uh, that debt collectors are, are providing or what they're doing for a business, it can kind of lap over into other things that are going on with with uh, with the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act or even the, the, the Federal Trade Commission business practices on what they're doing with business practices. Um, Basically, what it's coming down to with all of these companies is that they were um, illegally 
putting a lot of pressure on people trying to collect money on them. This was one uh, check systems LLC. Let's look at this one. What were they doing? Uh, froze their accounts. Findings. Basically all the same. We're going to go through what those findings mean in when you look at the Fair uh, Debt Collection Practices Act. Uh, here's some more here. Clear Credit Clear Solution. That sounds like the one above. Crown, Crown, we haven't heard anything from Crown in a long time. Crown was actually in Minnesota. Let's see if they show that. They were actually in Minnesota. These were the individuals. Uh, I didn't show exactly where they were from, but Crown Asset, Crown Funding, they were all uh, companies out of Minnesota. Here's some other ones. See here, any of them look familiar? And I'm going down, scrolling down because you might have collectors. You know, some of these people may have something that's similar, where they kind of change the name or similar. Or you see some of these individuals, individuals' names. They cannot participate in de the debt collection business at all anymore. So we can see some more here. Uh, this was looked like it was a maybe a law firm, National Landmark Logistics. Uh, not about I see this one here. Saw this one, National Payment Processing, and uh, let's see here, Pacific Holding. Some of these sound familiar because we get a a lot of uh, debt collection letters from. Um, from uh, individuals and we do the debt validations and so some of these sound familiar this person here sounds familiar i knew it did look at that because they were with another company we've actually had to send uh debt validation letters to that company or it was one of these other ones but i remember by that name i remember in Illinois, so it's close to our state. Uh, I remembered uh, uh, that name because we went back and forth, and this individual ended up calling our company. Uh, you know, when we started putting a lot of pressure on the debt validation that we were sending to them, you know, asking for information that we knew that they probably didn't have. Uh, let's see here. We got some other ones that are familiar. I'm pretty sure if I comb through with some of the ones that had the individuals' names, it would probably be companies that we had sent debt validation letters to uh, in the past. Okay, so I'm gonna pause the video and we're gonna take a look at that uh, specific code in the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act that debt collectors are violating that they're using to go after these debt collectors. Okay, so for the code that uh, the first FTC, Federal Trade Commission Act, Section 5, uh, 15 U.S.C. 45, the, the one, this is the first part of every lawsuit that I'm seeing that they're doing the FTC Act, Section 5, and then they're going on to the Fair Debt collection practices. So let's just take a quick look at what it means for this one here. It says that uh, Section 5 of the Fair Trade Co Commission Act, uh, unfair or deceptive acts or practices in or affecting uh, commerce, the pro uh, prohibition applies to all persons engaged in comment in commerce including banks under section 8 of the federal deposit insurance act the board has the authority to take appropriate action when fair unfair or deceptive acts or practices are discovered so basically what they're saying is that 
they feel that whatever these uh, debt collection companies were doing, that it f fell under th this here, that they were deceptive or that they were doing something that would hurt the uh, consumers or the, uh, the uh, individuals that owed uh, these debt collectors. And, and this could fall under the way that they were actually either contacting them or, uh, or the way that they were describing uh, the conditions by which they owed them. You know, like they, you, you know, think about it this way. If someone calls you and they say, you know, hey, you owe this money and uh, we want to see what you want to, you know, if we can work something out. Or are they calling individuals saying, hey, you owe this money. And then on the second call, they're calling, hey, you need to pay this bill. You owe this. We're going to sue you. We're going to do this and that to you making all types of threats. I mean, we don't know how far they went. Some of the ones when I was reading, and you can read through them, also some of them would threaten personal injury on people. You know, you can't go about doing that. And so it's, you know, even though this is a vague, uh, like this, I call this like an umbrella, where they're just saying what you did falls under uh, the Fair Trade Commission Act, Section 5, where it was unfair or deceptive acts or practices. What you were doing as a debt collection business falls under this category and we're going to put an end to what you're doing because of that. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to go over to the, the Fair uh, Debt Collection Practices Act to see the specific code in there, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be similar that they are just, uh, you know, using this as an umbrella for the overall lawsuit. Okay, now um, for the 15 USC code of the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, what they were stating is that these individuals had had uh, had committed a crime, and that's what what happened with all of these individuals. Could it had here um, four and five? So it said that that they were going to result in arrest or imprisonment of any person or seizure, garnishment, attachment, or sale of any property or wages unless such action is lawful. It, what they had stated was not lawful. And then number five, the threat to take any action that cannot legally be taken. And all of those debt collectors, the majority of them, what I uh, believe they were uh, involved with buying debt was passed the legal statute of limitations or the time barred statute and they were not legally even able to take people to court and sue them but they stated that they were and that's a violation of the fair debt collection practices act that they you, you were not allowed to do that so with that list of all of those companies and uh we'll go back to it here the list of all of these companies they when i looked and combed through now i didn't go through each one of them but when i looked and combed through with all of these that the the two things that they had in common which was one was the umbrella of the ftc violation of just basic business practices the second one was that they were doing they were threatening individuals with uh imprisonment some of them were not all, but all of them were threatening individuals with uh, taking them uh, to court, uh, suing them and taking personal uh, effects from them. And that was something that they cannot do. That is illegal. And uh, I'm pretty sure uh, the reason why it was illegal was because they were buying debt that was time barred, quote unquote. Uh, out of the legal statute of limitations to collect. So I'm going to put that link there and then uh, under my description so you can comb through and see these debts. Uh, if you have any, uh, if you need help with your credit, please visit us at thecreditrepairshop.com. Watch the video, What Makes Us Different, where I show you exactly how we repair credit and help people get out of debt and increase their scores, you know, over time. Uh, it's not an overnight type thing. Next thing is if you need to, your credit reports and scores because everything starts there. Go to the website, your3scores.com to grab your credit reports and scores. 
and uh, we, we could do reviews on them. And if you decide to work with us, that fits right in our software. Uh, if you have debt collectors trying to come after you, they're sending you a letter. Uh, I'm giving you the free letters to respond to them. Uh, first thing you need to do is check and see if the debt is past the legal statute of limitations to collect. This, this, all of these debt collectors were working within that uh, mode of collecting debt that was out of the legal statute of limitations to collect, uh, or at least most of them were. And the only way you're going to find that is look at your credit reports and look at when the original charge off was from the original creditor, not from the debt collector. That a lot of people think that once the debt collector gets it, the time starts over again. No, it starts from that original charge off date. Uh, I'm giving you three letters. If one of them is for if the debt is past legal statute limitations, you only need to send them that letter. You need to fill in your information about your debt and then you need to send them that letter certified mail and uh, uh and you don't need to do any debt validation or anything that's it if it's yeah, past statute a limitation to collect the other two letters i give you is a cease and desist collection activities letter and the debt validation letter you use those uh the first one you'll use is a cease and desist because that's going to make the debt collector know that you're going to make them prove every aspect about the debt that they're trying to collect uh you know, the old debt that they purchased that they're trying to collect. A lot of debt collectors will fall back when you when, when you send them that letter. Uh, some might try to come back and forth, send you a bank statement or, or some type of statement, uh, not a bank statement, but a statement, last statement from that creditor. Uh, but you can go back and forth. You can see the holes that will be available to you uh, to, to, you know, to go back and forth with that debt collector and you potentially will never have to pay that debt. But the one thing that you don't want to do is disregard it because if you disregard those letters, they, that will allow them to go to step two and they'll place that information on your credit reports. You don't want that to happen. I know you might be watching videos here on YouTube or on other uh, platforms and they're telling you to just disregard them. We got plenty of people here. You probably had it happen to yourself. You need to respond because that's going to be the way that you're going to stop them from coming after you for it. I'm not talking about responding on paying the debt. I'm talking about you need to start fighting to dispute the debt directly with the furnisher, but you have to do it the right way and you have to see where you're at with the debt. If it's past statute of limitations, then you're not even talking about amounts. You're just talking about dealing with them to stop coming after you for that debt, putting them on notice that they can't come after you for debt collection or for a debt that is past the legal statute of limitations. And the statute of limitations is different for every state. You can go to my website, thecreditrepairshop.com, and at the bottom, click the blog and search statute of limitations, and you can see the different statute of limitation time periods for every state. It's different for every state. I don't know why it's not the same, but every state made their own laws. There are some statute of limitations that are as low as three years. So three years from the charge off date, if it's after that and they haven't gotten a judgment, they can't come after you, the original creditor or the debt collector. They cannot come after you. They can leave it on your credit reports if you don't do anything about it, but they can't collect on that debt uh, legally. They, can, you, they You have no legal obligation. You can pay it if you want to, you know, if you have a moral obligation to, to uh, work out something for them, you, you can, uh, you know, pay it or figure out who owns it and, and pay something, settle it, but you have no legal obligation. They cannot sue you. The only way that they can reset that debt is if you accidentally talk to them on the phone and you make a payment or initiate a new contract, which is something that some of these companies were probably tricking people into doing. All right, so I'm in the video here. Uh, if, uh, this is Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of the CreditRepairShop.com. Thank you for your time, and can't wait to see to talk to you the next time.